chemistry is really the study of the invisible, things we can't see. Atoms and molecules, that's what it's all about. But that's especially true when it comes to gases. We really take atmospheric pressure for granted. So when students see a demonstration like this, and this one dates way back, I'm going to pour some water in this jar. cover the jar with a little card, turn upside down, and take my hand away, that's rather remarkable that the water stays in there. What's going on? Well, the explanation for this is it's atmospheric pressure. Think of the forces that were acting on that card just now. There's the jar. I filled it with water. So we have water inside here. There's the card. If all you were thinking about was the water pushing down on it, you would think the car would go down, the water would spill out. But we forget that there's atmospheric pressure. And atmospheric pressure, 15 pounds per square inch, well, 14.7, we'll call it 15. That's a lot more pressure being exerted upward on that card than there is downward. So the card stays in place. It doesn't fall out. Well, actually, the question is, if there's more pressure pushing upward than downward, why does the card not go up into the bottle? It should. Greater pressure. Well, it would if it could, but it's obviously too big. We could try trimming that card down so it just fit like that, and then I guess it should work. That might turn sideways, though, and spill out all over the place. And this demonstration is essentially that, the second one I'm going to show you here. So I've got a long tube here. And I'll probably need all my water back. So, And I've just colored it with some green food color in there to make it a little bit more visible. And um, first task is to fill this longer bottle up with the water. Make sure that stopper is securely in <laughs> the other end. You'd be surprised with just, I'll say this is a four foot two, four feet of water pressure can do, okay, to make sure that I'm just going to pick it up and, okay, it's in there. And I'm not going to use a card, but instead a test tube that fits in there. And I'd like a test tube that fits in there nice and, I shouldn't say snugly, but not with much room. So I put a little tape around it here. And there's going to be some water lost around the edges as I put this down in there. Okay. And now, check out what happens as I turn this upside down. Ready? I gotta put it down in there. Indeed it is pushed up in there. I call this the hydraulic elevator. Atmospheric pressure is stronger than even four feet of water pressure. Now I'm gonna get that out. <laughs> well, notice I used a stopper there, so I could just loosen the stopper a little bit, or give me a little shake sometimes is enough to Get it back down. Let's see here. There it comes. Makes a kind of a fun noise, too. Okay? So that's the hydraulic elevator. Let me show it to you again, though. A couple things I want to talk about. One is, I could not do this with a 40 foot tall tube. It works fine with a 4 foot tall one, but 40 feet, what would happen when I went and turned that upside down? 40 feet of water, that's enough hydrostatic pressure to overpower atmospheric pressure. The cutoff is at about 34 feet. That is, one atmosphere is equal to about 34 feet of, and I guess if I did that, hmm, <laughs> I'm not sure what would happen if I had, it probably would still flush out because of the weight of the test tube. But uh, this really does work because I'm sticking to relatively small tubes. Now, one more time. Just fill it up completely. Actually, we leave a little bit more room this time because I know that test tube displaces some of the water. And I've got a test tube. I've also got a second one. This one is a little bit more tape wrapped around it, so it's a little bit more snug of fit. So we'll see what happens. Um, what do I want to do? I'm going to put that one in second. Huh? Okay, the original one in second. So this is the one that's got a tighter fit there. Okay, same idea. Okay, 
The trick, of course, is you kind of push it a little bit just to keep it in place until, and now we have one that'll take a very long time. It's a very narrow gap. You could set that up. You could probably even use it as a little <laughs> timer. And, but it is, it's working the same. And why is it going more slowly? Simply because the water has less room to move around it, okay? But it is falling out. Now, this lets us talk about it a bit more extensively. If I were to put my hand over the bottom of it, interesting little thing you're seeing now, wait a second. When I cover it like that, am I blocking atmospheric pressure? No, we still got the atmospheric pressure there, but now the entire thing becomes a test tube that's riding on top of a bubble, right? And that kind of makes sense. The bubble floats, brings the test tube up with it. But when the bubble has no bottom to it, that gets a little strange. So there's the uh, hydraulic elevator in slow motion. <laughs> you can also, because that'll take forever, if I go like this and just give this a little crack to the side, pushing the stopper to the side a bit, just a little bit, I can actually make the elevator go down, okay? So there it is, the hydraulic elevator. Thank you.